<laughs> People ask me all the time, they're like, Mickey, why do you get up there and act like a fool? Why do you get up there and tell jokes? Well, I can't say it like Jason Crown. <laughs> Don't laugh, you can't either. <laughs> the second reason I do what I do is because it's biblical. The Bible says that laughter is good like medicine. There may be somebody here tonight, you may be sitting there, you may be going, well, Mickey, I just didn't think you were that funny. <laughs> well, from the bottom of my heart, <laughs> you can shut up. <laughs> I may not be that funny, but I'm better than a colonoscopy. Can I get a what what on that right there? People ask me all the time, they're like, how did you get started doing comedy? Well, just to be totally honest with you, I got started doing comedy out of a very dark season in my life. I, um, if you do any research on your favorite comedy, you'll find out that a lot of the times we will use comedy and humor to cover up pain. And that's what I did as well. Um, I had fallen into one of the deepest, darkest pits of depression that a person could ever fall into. And it was to the point that I did not want to live another day. I could not think of having to face another day. In my independent Baptist raising, I don't take it for granted. I'm thankful for my biblical foundation. But there was one thing that we lived by, and that was we pray about everything. We just don't talk about anything. I didn't know when I started having emotions and I started having issues, I didn't know that I was supposed to get help and I was supposed to talk about it. I just suppressed everything. And it just kept piling up. Like at the age of 13, when my mom and dad sat me down and explained to me that I was adopted at birth, they said that when my dad found out that my mother had decided not to go through with the abortion, but that she had decided to give me life, they said that it made my dad so mad that he stood up in that room that day and he walked out and I never met him. I don't know his name. I don't know what he looks like. I mean, I got a pretty good idea he was good looking. I mean, look up here. So I didn't know how to process my emotions. I didn't know how to get help. So what I learned from a very early age is just don't talk about it. And hopefully it'll go away. It doesn't go away. And I didn't realize that until I was a full grown adult. And I hit rock bottom. I hit rock bottom while I was serving as a senior pastor of a church. Church began to grow. We were up to about 400 people. A lot of things were going great. But I was falling apart. I had taken about all I could take. And I ended up making some bad decisions. And when I say bad decisions, I ended up making some sinful decisions. You're probably wondering, Mickey, why are you sharing this with us? Well, number one, God already knows all about it. Amen. And number two, I'm never going to see you people again. <laughs> <laughs> How many of you know that your choices have consequences? Oh, yeah. 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 Mine did. Because of my decisions. I ended up getting fired from the church. And the same day that they fired me from the church, they escorted me and my family out of the pastor's house and they asked us to never come back again. That was the moment that I gave up on God. I gave up on the church. And I gave up on me. Because I didn't want to live another day. I was mad hurt. I was embarrassed. And I was done. 
I was praying every night for God to take me out of here. I was like, God, please don't. Don't make me face another day. And then I would wake up the next day and I'd be so mad at him because he didn't answer my prayer. I ended up building up an anxiety to where I was unable to go out in public. I couldn't be around people. The thought of having to be around people would cause my anxiety to go up. And so it was just easier for me to just stay home and stay in the bed for about a year. People ask me now, they're like, Mickey, how is it that you're able to stand in front of this crowd tonight? Oh, it's easy now. <laughs> I'm medicated. <laughs> I'm, I'm okay to admit it. I am medicated. I figured if a diabetic can take shots so they can eat coconut cake, I ought to be able to take a little white pill so I don't kill you. You know what I'm saying? And then I figured the people that are judging me are taking blood pressure medicine anyway. I was in a deep pit. And I didn't know how to get out. My daughter came to me one day and she said, Dad, you, uh, you're you going to have to do something or me and Mom's going to have to do something. Because how many of you know that you may only have one person in the house that is sick, but that one person is still going to affect the entire house. Yes. And mine was. When she told me that, I had to make a decision. Because in my mind, I had already made it up. If they walk out on me right now, I'm checking out of this place. But it was my daughter. Mm -hmm. I promised her that I would fight. So I reached out and I found a psychologist who was a believer spirit field and I ended up meeting with him because he got me hooked up with a physician I ended up having to meet with him every week for an entire year just so I could get out of the bed so when you see me on this stage tonight having fun with you mm -hmm. I just want you to know this in the short few years God has brought me a long way Amen. Amen. My psychologist said, Mickey, you're going to have to find your purpose in life because your purpose will help you get out of the bed when you don't feel like you can go. I don't know if I have anybody else here tonight that knows what I'm talking about, but I still have days where I feel like the weight of the world is sitting on my chest and I can't breathe. I feel like my legs are paralyzed and I can't move. And he said, Mickey, if you'll find your purpose, that will help you go when you don't want to go. I go into churches just like this and I make the announcement that no matter what you battle with, even if it's mental illness, God loves you. Yeah. Yeah. There's a lot of churches we go into and they don't like it when I say that, but I don't care because they don't have to invite me back. <laughs> because I want to let you know that if you battle with that, God does not talk to us like other Christians talk to us. Not one time did God look at me and say, well, Mickey, you're just going to have to get over it. What God did for me, He will do for you. Yes. Right. And this is what God did for me. He reached down into the pit of my mental illness. And He <laughs> said, Mickey, if you can muster up enough energy to reach up and grab a hold of my hand, I'll make you this promise. I will walk with you every step of the way until we get you to your healing. Yes. And He's never let go. And He'll do that for you. Don't give up the fight. Keep your head up. You're stronger than you think you are. And you may be saying, well, Mickey, how do you know that? You don't even know me. I know that because you're still here. Keep fighting. Keep fighting.